Are you looking for an alternative to Ring Video Doorbell or Nest Video Doorbell that is also battery powered? Then you've come to the right place. Hello, I am Wanderer001 and this is my review of the Eufy 2K battery powered doorbell. I will start this review off saying that this video doorbell was provided to me by Eufy uh, to do an unbiased review for them and present that information to you. Let's talk about the Eufy battery-powered 2K video doorbell here. We're gonna talk about quickly the general specifications. You are looking at a video doorbell that is five and a half inches tall, two inches wide, and has a depth of one inch, and that is partially because it does have a battery. If you've seen any other Eufy products and you've seen their Eufy wired doorbell, you may notice that this is a little chunkier. However, compared to some of the offerings from Ring, this is a sizably smaller video doorbell, and I appreciate that because I would like to be able to put this in more locations, and I'm very happy a battery-powered video doorbell because before I got my house, I would have loved to be able to put this in the hallway of my condo and not have to worry about wiring. That's what's so great about this. But let's talk about for those of you, such as myself currently, who are going to be utilizing this outside. You are looking at IP65 weatherproofing and a temperature range of negative four degrees up to 122. I can say personally, I have been able to test this up to 94 degrees and 100% humidity, and it has gotten rained on several times. Not quite as many times as some of the other reviews I've done, but enough that I know it is waterproof. Coming around the front here, we have our lens, which is an expanded field of view at four by three. You have digital zoom, which you can zoom in quite nicely. You'll see that when we talk about the app a little later. It has a PIR sensor on the front. That's how this is going to pick up people because it is a battery powered doorbell. It's not going to be sucking power constantly, meaning it needs to have something that's going to trigger it. Around the lens itself, you have eight IR lights, as you can see here. You do not see them until it actually triggers, and at night they flash up really quickly and then die down if the recording stops. So they don't eat up a lot of battery, which is a good, a good thing. You've got your large push to activate, and if we do so, you can hear that it rings the video doorbell and has a light that comes around it. This light is very dim, I appreciate that, and will only be visible if the button is pressed or it triggers a motion event, and then it doesn't spin around, it's just a solid blue. But if you choose to look through this camera to view what's outside, you're not going to have that light light up, which I like because it's kind of like a stealthy doorbell camera, even though it does say Eufy security on the front. We're going to tilt this slightly so that you can see on the bottom here, this is our speaker. That's where you heard that ding dong from. That is where you will hear your two-way audio, which we will talk about a little later. Right down here, if we can get that to focus a little better, this, this is the snap that will allow you to mount and dismount the video doorbell from the wall mount. Looking at either side, there's nothing really to look at. On the back here, if we come up to the top, you have your covered micro USB charging port. You can plug this in to either the base station, which we'll talk about a little later, or directly into a wall wart. You have your syncing button, and even though this is a battery powered doorbell, you have the option to wire it if you wanted to. So if you like the setup of the Eufy security doorbell, battery powered as opposed to their wired version, you can get that and just power it yourself. We're gonna flip it back to the front here one more time because I did forget to mention right above the lens itself, that is the microphone for the camera. And since we're back to talking about the lens, in particular, you are looking at a Sony 2K sensor that has WDR, which is wide dynamic range. It's going to make the image quality that you can get from this a lot better than a simple, like regular door doorbell camera. The battery inside, while the specifications are a little lacking on Eufy's end, and I wish they would uh, put a little more information about that, it is stated to last 180 days. I will say I have been testing this for about three weeks now, constantly doing video clips, looking through the camera, and I'm down to half battery. So that'll give you an idea if you're just doing regular clips, how long this could potentially last you. So we've discussed the doorbell hardware itself, how it looks, what you can expect from it, how it sounds. The other thing to consider is that this is only part of what you get with the, the Eufy 2K video doorbell 
security system. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at what else you get in the box with the Eufy security camera, as well as go through the installation and setup process for the Eufy video doorbell here, so you can see just what you're in store for with this. This is an unboxing of the Eufy Security 2K HD resolution doorbell. This is the battery powered version and it is a dual system so you get the doorbell and the base station but that will be explained later. This is mainly an unboxing and the only reason I'm doing this is because the there are quite a few things in here that I want you to know about. And to be fair, I did open this already to get an idea of what was in here. So I'm just letting you know my findings. It's not necessarily about the presentation overall, but rather what you get inside. So opening it up, you are first greeted with top level, which is your information packet. We're just gonna leave that there so you don't get distracted. We're gonna come over here to the back. And in here, we have lots to look at. Mainly being, well, first, what's this? Well, this is actually a guide template for when you're putting up your doorbell. I appreciate something like this because normally I just hold the back plate up and mark it. They give you a guide plate, which is awesome. You also get the sticker for kind this of- This is 24 seven monitoring. So always good to have that when you have video in place. And then kind of a quick start questionnaire guide right there, and then your actual quick guide, which will cover everything you actually get in the box here. Now we're gonna take the top layer off here, and we are presented with our base station and our doorbell. So here we go, doorbell, everything. You can see plastic is still in place because I haven't put this up yet. And our base station, we're just gonna leave that in here to make it easier to grab onto to pick up. There is a little hole here that you can grab onto, but uh, the base station for me was just an easier way to do that. Now, the reason I specified that I opened this up first is because I don't want you to think that the box you get here on the side is gonna be packed quite so poorly. That was purely my doing. We're gonna open that up, and that's also because I couldn't remember where this went. This is your base plate slash wedge. So you will either mount this flatly against your wall, or you have this wedge, which you can use with this in order to tilt your camera however you need. What else do we get in here? Well, they are nice enough to provide you with a ethernet cord, which is great because you'll need that for the base station. Likewise, you have your power supply for the base station. Next we have, and this will just open up so you can actually see it. This is a micro USB cable for charging the battery on your doorbell. This can be plugged in directly to a wall wart or to the base station to charge. It does not come with a separate power brick for charging the doorbell. Also, you get these. You have your chime box bypass. So these cables will allow you to bypass your chime box if you want to do that. Directions that I read specify that you don't need to if you don't want to, but you can if you'd like. And this is your wall mounting for your doorbell. Notice you have two different sets, one for the base plate and then one for the wedge. Notice they also give you an extra one just in case you lose it, which I like. And they also give you a set of three anchors, which again, it's always good to have extras if you lose them. And last but not least is this. And you might be asking, well, what is this? At the bottom of your base, notice that sticker mirrors this. This is so that you can push in and release your doorbell. So the doorbell itself actually has a lock to the base station, which I really appreciate because one of my newer doorbells that I tested over there did not have this. It this, this key thing here is substantial. It is weighty, I like it. The back of it there actually is kind of, well, it is magnetic. It's not a strong magnet, but you can actually plop this up on your refrigerator so you don't lose it. So that that's kind of a neat feature. And again, this, this is something I really appreciate. So this is everything that you get in the box with your 2K resolution battery powered doorbell. This is set up of the Eufy battery powered doorbell 2K. For starters, we have to get the hub set up first. So that's what we're gonna do. So step one is taking the base station and powering it up and plugging in the ethernet cable, which came provided. So that's what we're gonna do. And you're gonna do this before you set up the actual doorbell. So first we're gonna take our network cable, plug that in. We'll come back here, plug in our network cable to our router, and then power our device. So tuck that in over there. And hopefully you can see that that 
actually blinking red, which means that we can come over to our application and we are going to select add a device, home base station, it says plug everything in, which we've already done, so we're gonna select next. All right, this one, it wants us to connect to the same Wi-Fi that the home base is connected to, which we're gonna find out if that includes the five gigahertz. So we're gonna select next, and then we're going to wait one minute until the base, the home base LED turns from red to blue, and uh, should. Welcome to UFI Security. Follow the instructions in UFI Security app to set up the system. Hopefully you heard that. So we did get prompted, so we're gonna select next, and it wants us to scan, so we're gonna hit scan QR code only this time, and then the QR code is actually on the bottom of the base station, so we're gonna come over here and find it, and it scanned it. Home base receives a pairing request. Press the sync button on the back to accept it. All right, so we are going to do exactly what it said, which is click the sync button on the back. Home base was added successfully. So it says the home base was added successfully. However, the application says it was not. So we are going to, and here we can see, even though it said it wasn't added, it prompted that it was added. And up here was the serial number. I just changed the name of it so the serial number wouldn't be there. But we can, say, we can see it was successfully added. Next, what I'm going to call step two in the setup process is actually pairing the, the doorbell to the app. Even though you probably should mount it first, but I have a good idea of where I want this. So we're gonna peel this off first. We are going to come up and say, add a new device. We're gonna scroll down to where it says doorbells and we are going to see two different types, wired and battery powered. We want the battery powered doorbell. And again, there is a QR code on the back. We are going to tell it to go into scanning mode and then I'm going to pick up my doorbell off camera here. So we are supposed to press the sync button until we hear the beep, which I heard the beep and we can see blue blinking now. So we have done that. So apparently the home base station is emitting a sound wave. So what that tells me is you actually do need to set this one up first. So what just happened off camera is I pressed the sync button again, ran downstairs, the base station said ready to add device, then heard a touch tone sound effect almost, and then it paired the doorbell to the base station and we are back up here and it says added successfully. We're going to select next. So it's letting us know that the battery in this comes at 80%. So you can have a choice for fast charging or normal. We're just gonna say got it. And right now it's asking, is there a traditional? What that means is, does it have access to a power supply? We are going to say no, because this is the purpose I got requested this one, is so that I could test a battery version. So we're gonna say no, I don't have existing doorbell wire, and I don't want to. And it's gonna apparently run you through a little doorbell setup video, which I'm not necessarily gonna make you sit through. So next it's asking, does your doorbell face a street? In my case, I'm gonna say yes. All right, so doorbell setup, we're gonna zoom in on this because it's asking questions. Is it shorter than or equal to 10 feet or three meters or longer than 10 feet or three meters? And in my particular case, I'm gonna say shorter than. So directions for mounting its sidewall if I wanted to. So this is check live view to make sure that you actually have a signal and there we do have a signal. So we're going to say continue. So we do, and we can also do a signal test, which is what we just did. We'll swipe over, check the live view. So again, make sure it's properly placed and then you can kind of check your angle there, mounting instructions for the wall plate, depending on what you got and then how to properly install it. Now we're calling this the setup process because the installation for this is actually ridiculously easy. Step number three, if you're so inclined, is to use that sticker that they gave you for mounting and adhere it to where you'd like to place your doorbell. And then you can use it to drill pilot holes so that you know what you're doing. The other option is to take the mounting plate itself, place it where you'd like, and drill directly in. Now, this is the one that I'll be doing, even though I do appreciate the fact that it came with a template. Once you have your base plate mounted, both top and bottom, you simply take your doorbell, you slip it up into the top first, and then wait until you feel and hear a click. 
that'll let you know that it is mounted in place and it's not going anywhere. After that, since it's got no wiring, that completes the installation for the Eufy 2K security camera. So you saw there during the installation process that you have a base station, not just the Eufy doorbell. So let's take doorbell and put it over here for a moment to talk about the base station itself. On the front of the base station, you have a indicator light here. It will show blue if everything is good. If there is a problem, you'll see red there. The sides, there's nothing really to look at. Everything else we're gonna talk about is on the back. You have your power port here. You've got your USB port right here, which will allow you to charge your video doorbell using the base station if you wanted to. You've got your ethernet port right here. Just keep in mind that you do not have to use the ethernet. Once you initially set it up, you can take it and use it on Wi-Fi so you don't have to use the ethernet port there. Over here, we have the button for sync and alarm off. And then right here, we have the recessed reset button. You'll notice on the back, large speaker grill and heat dissipation port. As well on the bottom, same thing, speaker and dissipation port. I will say, one of the things that I appreciate about this setup is that despite having it on constantly, it doesn't get that warm. It really doesn't. I've used other base station products that do tend to get a little warm with use, but I think because of the feet that you have that keep it off the surface, it helps to allow airflow through it. And we're just gonna come back to the front here so that we can talk about, well, what is the base station for? You saw during the setup process, well, clearly you need it, but what is it for? First, it is to communicate back and forth with the doorbell itself. The Eufy battery powered doorbell does not sit on your Wi-Fi network. The base station sits on your Wi-Fi network and the two talk to each other using a low power form of communication that helps to keep the battery on this lasting longer. The base station is also where all of your clips are going to be saved from the video doorbell. Internally, you have 16 gigabytes of storage. Originally, I thought that this was a very low amount and I, and I wanted the ability to add my own storage into this, but considering the three-ish weeks I've been testing and the lots and lots of clips that I've been getting, I'm gonna say I have barely even scratched the 16 gigabytes. And it does override older video clips, so if you did fill it up, your oldest ones would just disappear if you don't download them. Now, because you are storing your video clips locally, I also do appreciate that they offer AES-256 encryption for those files. So if anybody walks off with your doorbell because this doesn't have anything on it, everything is saved locally, so nothing is stored in the cloud, everything is saved for you in your home and encrypted. Meaning this is a very secure device instead of sending things up to the cloud like other providers. The other thing that I appreciate about this is that not only do you get to save your clips locally, person detection, which is very important for a doorbell, is included. So you don't have to pay extra, no subscription fee. That's one of the big things that Eufy products have, and I don't know why I didn't test them sooner, but no subscription service. Everything is included when you purchase. They do offer a subscription service, which I'll talk about a little later when we talk about the app, but you don't need it to utilize this to its fullest potential, which is awesome. Another thing that I always like to do is how much power does something use if it plugs into electricity? And I will say, for what this is doing, it sips electricity at 2.4 to 2.5 watts of power if it's actively talking to the doorbell. If it's just on standby, it's hanging out at 2.2. Now that we've talked about the doorbell, we've talked about the base station, we've talked about the two of them talking to each other and how that saves you power. The way that you are primarily going to interact with everything you see here is through the application itself. So why don't we use this as the opportunity to take a look at the Eufy app as it pertains to the battery powered video doorbell. This is the app walkthrough for the Eufy 2K HD resolution wireless battery powered doorbell. This will be broken up into two parts. First being the actual doorbell, which is this portion up here, and then the base station right here, which I just have called Eufy Home Base. So we'll start with the doorbell itself. When you first log into the application, you are greeted with a screen cap of the last thing that it saw. You can press play, which will give you a live feed of your doorbell at this particular time. Once it loads up, there we can see, this is the live video feed of Upfront. And you can see I can double tap to zoom in, and I can double tap one more time to really get in there and you can see just how clear that image quality is, which is great. 
Now we're gonna select back for a moment because we wanna talk about the other things that you're seeing here. You could see in the upper left-hand corner there, that is the name of my particular doorbell. I just left it as doorbell. You have a battery indicator there, which is great because, well, it's a battery powered device. You need to know how much battery power is left. I do wish that they had a percentage somewhere so I would know exactly or roughly how much I had left. You can also see in the upper left-hand corner there that there's a Wi-Fi signal. That means that it is attached to Wi-Fi, which again is also useful to know. We have a bell icon here with some Z's. Selecting that will allow you to snooze either the motion of it or the home base. And then you can select for how long you'd like to snooze, meaning it's not going to capture anything during those times. Here we have a box with a number in it. That indicates things that have triggered it and has captured clips of. So if I select that, we are brought to two separate clips for today, saying that it has detected a human because I have it set to just detect humans. And then you can play back your detection. So here we got my mailman coming through and away he goes and you can see the clip length is 15 seconds. It can vary depending on how long the person stays in frame for the Eufy here. And I do like the fact that it's a very wide angle lens which lets me see lots of things. So from our clips area we can download the clip, share the clip, donate the clip meaning that you'll allow Eufy to use it to help train their algorithm or we can delete it. The one problem I have with the clips and the recording directly from your live feed is that there is no place within the Eufy app that I have found that will allow you to actually access that library. You have to go through your phone to find that library on your own. I wish they had a simple click that would bring me there, uh, like other competitors, which I won't mention here, but just saying, I've done a lot of reviews of them, you get the idea, they have an album feature. You can select by pressing and holding what you would like to delete. So let's say I don't want this one, but we'll select this one, I can select delete, okay, and that will remove it. I can also select a particular date. I'm gonna go back and here you can see human detected, human detected. These are all actions that happened on this date. And if we select, you can kinda of tell when it's been in place because there'll be dots. We are going to select home on the bottom here to bring us back. You'll notice that that number now says zero and that is because we looked at our triggers. We're gonna come up here to the sprocket icon. This will allow us to do some settings for the doorbell itself. Here we can see picture of our doorbell, battery power. We can click here and change the name if we wanted to. We can also select camera on. If I do that, well, camera's gonna be disabled. It's not gonna get any footage. We're gonna cancel. We can turn on or off the LED status light, which is the ring around the actual camera button there. You can turn off auto night vision. I don't see why you would. It does have a pretty good sensor on it for capturing even in low light situations, but night vision is always helpful. So you want to keep that on. Logo and watermark are up to you. I like to have them just so I know what camera is capturing what. Here we have motion detection. I can select this and we can set detection zones, which I have done. And that is done by active zones here. And it's going to put us in this horizontal mode and we'll let that load up. Here you can see I actually just kind of blanketed everything in front of my house. Here's the beauty of it, we can always edit or delete this, but if we needed to, we can simply edit, and then you would have these drag that you can do from corners. This is, notice there's one, two, three, one, two, three, which allows you to manipulate this. When you first get it, it's actually like an octagon, which is an interesting, feature. So just know you can make changes and set it to a specific region. It's a lot more flexible than just a box, which I appreciate. Bring back. We can get notifications for human only or all motion, obviously because this is a doorbell and I'm facing a street. I just want to be notified of humans. And then we can set our sensitivity level here from one to five. I currently have it at a four and it's working pretty good at that level for me. We're going to come back now and select power management. Here, you can see current battery at 46%. I wish this was somewhere else so that I could see it. You have an option up here for how to optimize battery and that brings you into a help, which I'm not going to make you sit through. It's showing you use days, total events, false events filtered by AI, and then recorded. So here you can see exactly what it has been doing, which is great. And then for power management, you can select how you'd like the doorbell to function. In one case, you have optimal battery, meaning that it will prioritize saving battery and it gives you a little description as to what it's going to do. Balanced surveillance, which is currently in beta, 
or optimal surveillance, which is what I've been doing because I want this to see everything and capture everything. And then you can select customize recording, meaning you can specify the length of time that it will record. So I have some recordings that are 15 seconds, five seconds, and then 30 seconds. If I want a specified 20 seconds all the time, this is where you could do that to help save battery. Coming back, we have video quality. WDR enabled, this is turned on by default, but it says if you don't uh, have trouble seeing because of poor backlighting, you should turn this off. Streaming quality, it's set to auto, but we can do low, medium, and high, which is always good. Video encoding format, which is high, which is going to get you that 2K resolution. Just keep in mind when they're talking about 2K resolution, they are talking about saving it to your phone or the clips that are saved to the base station. You're not actually going to see a live feed of 2K. Streaming to Alexa or a Google smart device. So if you've got a smart device with a screen, you can set it up that your smart screen, should you ask it to, will display whatever this is seeing, which is a nice feature. Coming down, we have audio settings, which will enable audio recording, doorbell audio, so that's for the two-way talk, and then the doorbell ringtone, which is for the ding-dong sound. Coming back, we've got notification. Notify me when the doorbell rings or when there is motion. This is a good time to show you. If I drag this down, here is a notification that a person was at my door at this time, so about an hour ago. So that's the video that I actually showed you. I got a notification for that when it happened right away. This is what happens when you actually click on that event, that push notification that gets sent to you. Either it will go to the related history event, which is that downloaded clip, or you can go right to the live view. So this is nice. I like the fact that they give you the option of which way you wanna go with it. And here is the area where you can kinda of tell what happens when it gives you that notification. So you've got most efficient, which is get the notification without delay, but it's only text. You can include a thumbnail, which is what we saw before. And then the full effect, which is thumbnail included, blah, 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 blah. All right, but leaving it on the middle, you'll get what I got, which is fine. Motion alerts, it's set to default, but you can select silent bell change, blah, 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 blah. Got lots of options there, just like ring alerts, default or blah, 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 blah. So I, I appreciate the fact that there is the option for silent, should I need that, which other vendors need to think about. Indoor chime. So we've got existing doorbell chime. So this is all if you have a chime box. Eufy doorbell chime. So this is if you got one that you're gonna plug into your home base. We have the home base chime because that's what I got with this particular package deal. So home base alerts, I have that turned on. Home base ring, tone volume, I kind of fussed with that. And then each of these has its own distinct notification sound. I do kind of like the fact that not only do I get the sound on the base station, but when I'm testing it out, I also hear it on the phone. So not only was I hearing that on the phone, the base station downstairs was also making those noises. But I appreciate the fact that you don't have to be sitting in front of the base station to hear those. And then you have your Alexa chime, should you connect this to your Alexa devices. Quick response, I do like quick responses in that you can have quick responses when you're using the doorbell. So I don't wanna activate the two-way audio, I just push a quick response, which I'll show you in a moment but you can actually record your own quick responses, which is great. Here's one that I have set up already, which is called leave package at the door, even though they had one already. This one is in my voice, but if I wanted to, I can say add a new one and we will call this, hey you kids, continue. And then you have the ability to record a 10 second clip. Now it is a little finicky in that it requires at least three seconds of audio. So if you're a fast talker like myself, you might want to give yourself a momentary pause before you start talking. Hey, you kids get off my lawn. We can play it. Hey, you kids get off my lawn so that you get an idea of what audio you're gonna get, and then we can hit save. And what this will do is add it to the quick response menu in the doorbell area itself, which is just fantastic, quite frankly. So now I have two quick responses. You can see I can have up to three. So eventually I will remove this leave your package at the door. Actually, we will remove that one now because they already have a leave your package at the door. And we're gonna go back. 
because now we've got extra areas which are mounting guide, share this device, and about this device. All of these are fairly self-explanatory. They are involving the actual mounting instructions, sharing instructions, and if you had any questions about the device. We are going to select back now because that was our options for the doorbell. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the live area for the doorbell so that we can see some of those things that we actually set up a moment ago. Here we have the record feature, which selecting this will record whatever is being seen. We can select this, which is a image, gets saved to an album. This is our two-way talk option, so if we select this, anybody who's out there right now is hearing me talk and probably wondering what I was doing. We can turn that off. Here, this is our quick response menu, right here. So we can tap on that. These are the pre-built ones. Excuse me, can I help you? Please leave it at the door. We will be right there. Hey you kids, get off my lawn. Which is awesome. We also have a silent mode, which means you're not hearing the live audio from outside. But if we were to do, but if we wanted to turn that off, we just click to mute again. We can either take our phone to automatically have it adjust, or we can select this icon here, which will take up more of our screen. Now here you can see, obviously I will have a video portion, but this gives you an idea just how detailed things can be. So you can see the individual pieces of uh, plant life there, and then double tapping to bring you all the way back. And that is the doorbell portion and everything that we can do with that. Let's go quickly into the Eufy home base and see what we can do there. We select the sprocket icon, which will again bring up our options menu. We can rename. We can see that this is connected via ethernet. You do have the option if you wanted to, to do this via Wi-Fi. I just happen to have an extra port and have it connected via ethernet. You have time setting where you can either manually set you know, current time, 24 hours, it's saying I'm in New York, which is my closest time. Storage will let you see just how much has been recorded. It comes with a 14 gigabytes of onboard storage. You can see I've used 0.25 with all of these motion clips that have been detected. I can clear the storage if I wanna wipe everything out, or I can repair if there's a file that is broken, or I can format, which will, again, be another way of removing everything. We have our ringtone setting, so this is where we were before. You can see it did leave me off on the last one that I picked. You also have an alarm setting. There is an alarm feature built into the base station. So you've got different alarm tones. You've got alarm tone one or alarm tone two. But those will not play through here, they only play through the base station. You also have prompt value, volume, which I have mitted, mediumed out, so don't worry about that too much. And then I've got notifications. Switch mode, so these are geofencing extra things. That is actually more part of the overall Eufy app. You've got paired devices, which will show you anything that is paired to this particular base station. And then about this device, which is the base station. Now, when I was talking about geofencing, things like that, that brings us down here to the bottom. Currently, we are on the devices page. If we come over to events, that's going to show us all events. Next, we have security device that we have connected. Selecting this will allow you to set up defense modes, which is a topic for another discussion, but it's a way to turn protection modes on and off. You can have individual settings for home away, disarm, geofence, based on your location, and then specific scheduling. And all of these are customizable by selecting the sprocket in the corner. If you'd like me to go into more detail about that, just let me know down in the comments section below. Explore, this is kind of gonna be where you're gonna find all of their products and offerings, and if they have any sales going on. We're gonna come back one more time to our devices page because in the upper right hand corner we're gonna pay attention to the support. So selecting that will bring you to a help area. You can pick your device. You've got your messages so if they're pushing out anything to inform you they'll show up there. Exclamation point right here. Well this is going to be hey do you want to subscribe to a plan? That was new with one of the app pushes that they did. Over here on the left hand side hamburger button which will show you the name of the account and bring you into all of the specifics for the account settings. You've got My Devices, showing you all of your devices. Obviously, they can be found in lots of locations. You have Family and Guests, so if you have shared this device with, if you've shared any devices, you'll be able to find them there. You have your General Settings, which is Device Display Order, so you can rearrange them, which is awesome. Smart Detection, which again, here's the AI, and it's letting you know, hey, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. It does do very well with Human detection, I do not have any experience as of yet with it doing facial detection, and I can't tell if that's just because of the particular products I have don't do facial detection. Works with, here it's gonna tell you, Alex A, 
Google and HomeKit. This is gonna be one of the few that I've found that is compatible with HomeKit. And then we have app permissions where it will show you all of the permissions that it needs to have access to. And then screen prompt, uh, screen pop-up, we'll leave that alone for now. Coming back, additional services. Well, if you wanna pay for additional services, here's where you can find out information on that. If you are referring people, they have a referral program. They have a community where you can talk to people and you have help and about. So that was the side menu and that was a extended view of the Eufy app for the 2K doorbell as well as the home base station that comes with the battery powered doorbell. Right there you saw there's a lot that you can do inside the application and a lot of services that are considered free which you wouldn't get with other types of video doorbells. And like I said, that is a plus for Eufy and this particular battery powered video doorbell, which I greatly appreciate. One of the things that you may be asking yourself, which didn't really come across in the application portion is, well, how are the audio samples that you would get from this? This is an audio test of the Eufy doorbell battery powered. Test one, test two, test three. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. As you heard, audio samples are really good for something of this nature. The one caveat that I have is there is definitely a three to four second delay if you're having a two-way conversation. In that, when I was testing this with my wife, I would say something and she wouldn't respond right away. And what that tells me is, well, guess what? There is a pretty discernible delay. Audio quality is good, but if both parties are did you say something? Can, I can't hear, did you? It, it takes away from this. Not entirely bad, but just a data point to know that if you're going to use something like this, you're going to have that delay. And partially it is due because this is not a wired device and it has to talk to your base station and send communication that way. One other aspect of any video doorbell that's worth its salt is, well, how good is the actual video quality that you get with the video doorbell. And I will say one of the benefits aside from video quality with this is that Eufy does not require you to have subscription services for things like local storage of your clips. They don't force you to do that into the cloud. They don't force you to have a limited file size. They also offer person detection for free. That is the big thing. You get person detection with this video doorbell for free, which if you have a video doorbell, is really what you want it for because you want to know if somebody's around looking at your stuff. You saw in the app that you can set up a zone to detect within and, and that is very helpful. And I am glad that Eufy offers that particular functionality free of charge. Even if other companies offer it cheaply, Eufy offers it for free. Over in the corner there, I will link to the actual raw video files so that you can see what the 2K resolution looks like. Video footage, not terrible. There was a little artifacting with the night vision. Most of the time it was triggering when I was fairly close to the camera itself. That's because it uses that PIR sensor, which is a heat based sensor. You're not getting pixel based motion sensing because it's battery powered. Is that bad? No, it's not. It's a trade off. For the most part, I get people when they're in front of my door. Had a nice wide field of view, which is something that others don't have because they're kind of boxing it in to show you a package that might be on your step. Well, I kind of get the idea that if somebody walks up to my door, I'll know that there's a package. Or if I see somebody come to my door with no package and leave with a package, I'll know that they took something. I'd rather have that wider field of view. All that being said, the question that is probably on your mind is how much does this cost? And this is that complete system that we talked about before. It is $200 for the system currently. And I will say, for me, it was a little sticker shock because I tended to go for cameras that were a little cheaper. However, I will state with all of the features that this has, with all of the free features that it implements, I can see the long-term savings that this would offer, even at that price point. If you are considering a battery-powered video doorbell, I strongly recommend checking out Eufy battery-powered 2K video doorbell, especially if you want those 2K clips, which was really good in my opinion. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. 
If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.